All right. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. I hope every, everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I had a fabulous Thanksgiving going out to Palm Desert with my family. And it was kind of special because one evening, we're sitting in the living room, no TV, no cell phone, no alcohol yet. And we started talking about reincarnation, past life regression. What does Ernest Holmes say about reincarnation? You know, we don't talk about that much. Uh, I'll tell you later. I'm not going <laughs> to tell you today. And we started um, having this kind of deep, meaningful conversation. And my son goes, well, what is... Uh, I said, well, just imagine this. We are individualized expressions of a God, okay, that, know each, that knows us, right? But how does that work? If you're an individualized expression of the whole, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> okay, so you have choice. You have consciousness. And you make a decision, and your personality, your consciousness grows and expands like this. God, spirit, goes, oh, look at that. I can now know myself better because now that's part of me. So it goes bigger and bigger. So every choice you make, every choice you make is expanding the consciousness, is expanding God and God's awareness of you. And that becomes God as a whole. What a conversation to have. At the house, it was fantastic. The irony is that as I was preparing for the talk this Sunday, Ernest says, <laughs> we believe in the individualization of spirit in us and that all people are individualized of the one spirit. Now you notice Holmes does not say what, what that individualized expression is. Holmes does not identify it because what Holmes is saying is, is we have to look at all of us, the spiritual part and the ugly part of us. So the month of October, Reverend Alice was talking about uh, paradox. And Dave back there gave a talk on paradox as well. So in November, we're talking about this heady subject, which is called uh, spirituality, sacred, mundane, and profane. What? Mm. Okay. Now, be honest with me. How many knew what profane meant before this month started? Really knew what it meant. Okay, my, my wife, who has studied Greek, she can take any word and tell you what it means, just by the way it's spelled. She was wrong. My daughter is incredibly intelligent. Oh, it has to do with profanity, right? Yes. She's wrong. It <laughs> has nothing to do with that, okay? It's not a word we use every day in our language, is it? The profane life that I live. <laughs> no, no, not at all. So what do we know so far? What is sacred? What is a sacred thing? I'll give you a hint. Writing, literature, text, music. music, could be, could be, I'll get to that later, could be a building, right? Could be a spiritual practice. What else do you think is sacred? Well, that's one interpretation. If you follow that, then everything should be sacred, right? Everything is sacred. Well, what about the profane? What's the profane? If you, re if you read the dictionary, it says the opposite of religious. Okay. The opposite of religious doctrine. Okay. But if you live in a profane world... There's reasons for that, because the profane is the ordinary. It's the day-to-day. -day. But if you live in a profane world, it values 
logic, science, art, creativity, doesn't like to be, follow orthodox thinking because there's too many rules. So think about it. If you're a spiritual person, there are rules for you to be spiritual, aren't there? Right? Otherwise, it's a, you could break a taboo and, and go to hell or whatever one does. <laughs> okay? But there are rules. A profane world, there are not. They don't, we don't like them. But one needs the other. Both need each other. Sociologists, anthropologists have been debating this for a long, long time. Is how do they interact? Because the spiritual community can make up all these rules, but the profane community can say, whoa, 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 you're a little out of bounds here. Let's dial it back a little bit. Let's change it. It used to be that if you... Um, can only find God in church, in the physical building. That's the only place God existed, right? We know that's not true because along comes Emerson, who's probably one of the greatest uh, liter literary contribution that was made in American literature, Emerson, and his transcendentalist, and he said, hold on there, Mr. Church. God's in nature. God's outside, not in the building anymore, okay? World start blurring, okay? Used to be technology. How does technology change? Well, now we have megachurches on the Internet. You can have a global community through the Internet. The interesting thing to me is that the world has not agreed on one thing that is sacred to everybody. There's no such thing. There's not one thing, because what is sacred to one group of people may be mundane and ordinary to another group of people. Anything we give power to and awareness to and importance to becomes sacred. A rock can be sacred. A twig can be sacred. I'm, a, I'm out in Palm Desert. We're going on a hike on the Taquitz Canyon, and there's an incredible big rock, big rock there. And I was shocked because it has trees in it and some other things. I'm going, this is a rock. These are just the veins in the rock. Could this be sacred? Of course it could be sacred because we deem it to be sacred. When we look at our sacredness, it requires us to do something. It requires us to practice. It requires us to take some kind of action. But to be better grounded in our sacredness, we have to look at our ugly side. We have to look at the, the dark side, the things that are, aren't so good that aren't working so well. What happens when your sacred world starts falling apart? And what ha happens when your profane world starts falling apart? One turns to the other. If you're in a profane world and you need more money and you're poor and you're suffering and struggling, well, you're going to turn to God. But if your sacred practices aren't working, you're going to go, oh, maybe there's money. I'm missing out on something that I need. Or They judge your future. They judge how to navigate the world. I call it spiritual amnesia, profane amnesia. We forget. We begin to forget. But that, I think that's part of being human, you know? It's tough work being human. It's tough work being enlightened. It's tough work being stupid. <laughs> you know, it's not easy because we have to deal with things. So we have to look at one world, one consciousness, one awareness, one God, one spirit. We're all connected into that spot, without a doubt. So I decided that with
with the help of Kelly, Corsi, we're going to do a, a meditation, a little sound bath experience. We've never rehearsed this, so, so we'll see how this goes. But the question before you is, what part of your life, what part of your world do you find most difficult to find oneness in? Okay? Are you willing to try this? Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. You just close your eyes right now. And take a deep breath. And exhale. Begin to feel more relaxed. More comfortable. More at peace. Take another deep breath and inhale. And exhale, feeling more and more relaxed, more at peace, going deeper and deeper and deeper, lower and lower and lower, feeling more and more relaxed. More at peace. As you begin your journey, as you begin to walk, you feel this energy, this sound, this voice that speaks to you. voice says that I have been waiting for you. We have been waiting for you. We know who you are. And imagine all of your guides, your angels, all of those who have come before you. They are waiting for you. They touch you. And your eyes awaken. And they ask you a simple question. What is it for you to do in this world. They know you can't change everything. But you can do something. What is it that you need to do see wholeness in your life.
open your heart. Open your ears. Open your touch. Open to love. something was said to you or revealed to you, say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, consciousness. Thank you, love. And bring that back with you to this room. Begin your journey upwards. Feeling more and more relaxed, more aware and awake, and the higher you go. Five, four, feeling satisfied. Three, two, and one. Open your eyes, be fully present, awake, and alert. Hmm. Hmm. Well, what'd you think? Where'd you go? What are you willing to share? that other people want to hear. What is it for you to do? Thank you, Kelly. Yes. You know, I liked every so often those little high-pitched bowls going, ding, ding, do, do, do. Mm-hmm. What is it for you to do? Come on now. It's okay. Nobody's going to bite you. Yes, serve. Serve. Amen, sister. You do that so well. Anybody else? Give? Forgive. Forgive. Okay. We have a serve and a forgive. Anybody else? Write a book. Write a book. (laughs) Who said that? Yes. Two. Two, not one. What else? Simplify. Simplify? All right. Come on, something on the back of the left side here. Love more. What what the peanut gallery say? Sing. Sing. You know, just imagine a watercolor, okay? And you put on a piece of paper a color. And then you put another piece of color somewhere else in the painting. But why is it called watercolor? Because it's the water that blends with the two colors that makes a third and a fourth and a fifth color. That's how we should see the world in our consciousness. A plethora of openness. What did I write down? I wrote a palette of consciousness for each other. A palette of consciousness for each other. So take the ugly, take the good, take the bad, take the sacred, take your best, take your worst, put it all together, put it in here, Okay, say, God, okay, I'm going to be aware, I'm going to be conscious, I'm going to make a difference, I'm going to change. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so it is. And Kelly, my dear, you're back on. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Come on up here, Kelly, anyway. Come on up here. I'm supposed to pray, so you come pray with me. Okay, know with me right here and right now that God is all there is, and we just have to say yes. We say yes to the world. We say yes to love. We say yes to giving and receiving and writing books and being creative. 
But we say yes, letting go of that which no longer serves us, that dark side, that ugly side, that side that gives us challenges. We say, thank you, Spirit, because we choose you, and you choose us, and together we make a world that we can live in, a world that we can change, one soul at a time. Oh, it's good to be alive. It's good to be thankful. It's good to choose love. Oh, Spirit, thank you. And I will release this to the universe, knowing it is whole, it is complete, and it is done. And together we say, and so it is. All right, go get him, girl. <laughs>